Everybody and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. I am like so excited about this. Uh, I'm just gonna call it a conversation, a little less formal. Um, I am here with Doug Kramer from the Dazed but Not Confused YouTube channel. How are you doing today, Doug? Good, Bryce. Thanks for having me on. I'm so excited. Let me go ahead and before we even break into it, guys. I know if you're in my private group on Signal, we've already I've already shared Doug's channel. But if you're not, I'm gonna go ahead and share it again. Go ahead and make sure you are subscribed. All of Doug's le links will be down in the description box below. I know this is your second channel, Doug, correct? I think it's the third one, Bryce. The I lost one. count. I think it's I'm on number three, maybe four. I really lost count. It got shut down originally. I started in June 2020, and it got the first one got shut down in January um, 2023. And I think there's been two since then. So you guys, we really want to want to help him out. You have a back now. You have a backup channel on Rumble and Bitshoot too, correct? Yes, I finally got off my lazy ass and did that because of this very reason. <laughs> yes, it's um, it's very complicated. It adds more work, but I I have my backup nice. on Rumble too. So nice. you guys, I would suggest since um, Doug uh, struggles with a lot of the same things I do with trying to speak the truth but being on youtube i would go ahead and just make sure you're um subscribed to his backup channels too just in case one day it, just like mine just in case the, the main channel's gone one day you, you can still have see where we are and have access to to doug and i will say you guys so doug is an ex-scientologist you know guys know we have claire headley on the channel i love we love our claire but there was something about uh, uh doug's channel that i was like okay yes as my boyfriend said this guy sees he gets the bigger picture of what's really going on and i love your title cults cons conspiracies and psychopathy because it, we're going to get you know the whole bigger picture which my viewers are fully well aware of of what's going on in the world and one of my favorite series you've done has been raised in a secret society especially when you did the summer of psyop because you actually connected the son son of sam uh, charles manson the pro a, a lot of stuff which we'll, we'll eventually get into because it's so fascinating so all of that is going to be down in the description box below happy binging you guys on doug's channel um so doug where do we want to start wherever Why you want to start do you want to know start how the beginning <laughs> okay so my dad got into scientology when i was around be between eight and ten so i say nine years old and the way it happened real quick it's kind of a long story but i'll just i i've learned how to hone it down i think to five minutes so um <laughs> my dad was kind of an introvert his button as they call it in the cult what was bothering him um was he wasn't a very good communicator he was shut down i don't think he was a sociopath perhaps he was traumatized from being in the military whatever his background was because my family kept the i never really got to know him i'm still trying to figure that out but whatever it was that caused him to be so introverted and shut down that was how he got hooked into scientology and the way it happened is he left um work one day as my father when i was around nine and he came back a totally different person and the way i've described it since is that evil entered the house through my dad i'm not saying that my dad's evil but as we talk more about scientology i think you'll understand that um it's evil and that's what my dad brought home metaphorically speaking so he's um he recounted this story to me and what he said he was at work you know it's around 8 or 9 a.m and he's just flipping through the newspaper like he usually does and at the bottom corner of the newspaper it said dianetics which is a way to hide um that it's scientology um they're one and the same and it said dianetics learn how to improve your relationship you know do you have problem communicating in other words something in that ad trigger what we just talked about his inability to communicate he goes down to the cult long story short um I don't know exactly what happened there but when he came back he said to my mom 
um, I need to borrow $10,000. I just, from my brother, because we didn't have a lot of money at the time, I just discovered this new thing, Scientology. And it caused a shock amongst me and my mom and an uproar where they were fighting over several weeks over this. It might have turned into a divorce if my dad wasn't allowed to do it. That's how insistent he was. So what the hell happened there that day? Again, I'll just break it down briefly, but they take you into a room after filling out a 200 question personality test, which asks you very penetrating, odd questions designed to get inside your head and make you vulnerable. Then they take you into a room with the test results and somehow they have a way of touching upon things where eventually they're going to hit upon that button. So they try to get you to break down. They try to get you to feel vulnerable. So whatever happened in that room with my dad, they found his button. And then once the person is vulnerable, broken down, and they're reaching, as they say, they look right into your eyes like hypnotized robots, like they're trained. It can be quite penetrating. And they say Scientology can handle that. And then they're very persistent on selling you. Do you, do you want to get started today? It's $50 for your first course. Here's the communication course, which you said you're having problems with. Let's walk to the course room and get you signed up. So he ended up um, not only beginning that communication course, hence the dead eyes and the hypnosis, which goes in very quickly doing those drills, which we can discuss later, but they also sold them what's called an auditing package. Real briefly, there's two sides in Scientology. There's the training, and then there's the auditing side. Loosely, that's being hypnotized under the guise of psychotherapy, and you hold the strange thing called e the E-meter, and they basically implant false memories in you while you think you're going spiritually free. It's a long story to explain that, but they sold them a package of that auditing, which is the most expensive, and the whole thing turned out to be $10,000. Like I said, my dad brings it back to the family. My mom and dad argue for a while. What's the Scientology thing? Um, I would often cry as a kid listening to them argue downstairs, and my mom comes up one day and says, I don't know what this Scientology thing is. Your dad's very insistent on it. I don't know what the hell's happening to him, why he's talking differently or whatever. I don't want to scare you, son, but we might have to get a divorce. Long story short, it finally came to a head. And this is what this is how once one person gets into Scientology in the family, it's it needs to be spread to the rest. He was being trained by the cult how to speak to my mom. And one of the things that they that my dad finally said to get my mom to go down there rather than get divorced is look we're on the verge of divorce you don't know anything about this i understand you're worried would you please go down and check it out i mean before we get divorced don't you want to know what it is we're getting divorced about like i found this amazing thing you don't understand what what it is you know let me just take you down there and and why don't you just see for yourself and then you can make up your mind so my mom agreed to do that they found her ruin and she took to it so um she was a little slower getting into it i believe she did it to keep the family together but she did become a fully indoctrinated scientologist so for about 10 years they would work on me to manipulate me because again they were being trained by the cult how to do that so um i was rebellious i think a lot of that had to do with um i have quite controlling parents and then we have the cult in there so subconsciously i i was angry but i didn't know that where that was coming from so I was the black sheep of my family, and my sister was the golden child, the one that was praised, that didn't really have any problems, etc. So because I was rebellious, they felt I needed the most Scientology. So what they would do, and by the way, Bryce, I knew it was evil. Like, I didn't want to have anything to do with it. I didn't need to know anything about it. I just didn't like it. I didn't like what it did to my dad. I didn't want to have anything to do with it. But what they would do is they would have me sit down and offload for an hour or two, maybe I'd have a problem with the girlfriend, I'd have some kind of upset, whatever. And they would just listen, you know, as they were trained to intently listen in Scientology. And then at the very end, they'd say, now, son, we love you. Um, don't freak out. But, um, you know, you're going to need some punishment for your action. So would you like to be, you know, grounded for your, uh, to your room for a few weeks? Or would you please take a course at Scientology? We'll pay for it. We believe it'll really help you. And we just want to help you get over your issues. So I'd always tell them to go fuck themselves. But after a while, I finally just said, look, I can take it. Fuck it. Give me, let's go down and see the Scientology shit. Bryce, it's a long story about what happened in the courses and the auditing or whatever. It took them a long time to kind of break me down. Part of that was I did actually have wins, but they were actually um, the phenomena of being under hypnosis. 
and being dissociated, which can give you uh, maybe they reframe that as spirituality. Yeah. So I did have lots of strange, interesting, interesting things happening as a kid where I was slowly buying into some of it, but I resisted forever. Long story short, I get out of high school. I'm around 19 or 20. I hit a vulnerable point in my life. I have enough Scientology indoctrination and I had enough wins, i.e. hypnosis highs reframed as spiritual highs. And so um, I got caught for marijuana one day, which was um, very evil, both in my family and Scientology. That was finally my breaking point. I realized I need to get my ethics in, as they say. I need to stop messing up my brain with weeds, and I'm ready to take to Scientology. That's a really long story short, but that's around 20 years old. From there up until between 33, 34, I was, as I say, a 100% dedicated, fully believing in L. Ron Hubbard, Kool-Aid drinking cult member. And then I got out in a single day by a series of books being dropped off on my doorstep by a concerned friend for my acting class. So there's the five, I hope, 10 minute version of the whole thing. And it's so fascinating because I've heard your story because you you were you were gaining a lot of success in Hollywood, correct? Like you were in movies. Yeah, I was right there. on the verge. Yeah. And when this call came crashing down on you and I've heard you say that this guy from your acting class, like a friend of me almost, right? Like yeah. he dropped a bunch of books. Now, had he kind of berated you about the, the cult before or did he just slide in this um, book with other books? Just good question. You know? No, he. Um, he was a very jealous person when me and my best friend who grew up in the cult too. He died at 28, another story for another time. We got into this special school, which is hard to get into, which got us away from the Scientology schools that we were going to, named the Actor Studio. This was run by Martin Landau. This is a really prestigious school out here in LA and New York. So right when we got there, he was on us. You know, like a, a narcissist or a sociopath, they can hone in on you know, the people They're, that might shine a little bit. Or they yeah. <laughs> He was like that right when I met him. So that's why I say frenemy. And it doesn't it doesn't matter. I've thanked him a million times. Sometimes it can be an enemy that wakes you up. Who can, it doesn't matter. But no, right away. But um, he was always in our life like a little snake. And yes, right before he dropped the book off, he, well, a few months before that, he had found out I was a Scientologist. He would not tease me so much as so how much have you done in Scientology? And I would just try to brush it off because I didn't want to talk. I didn't trust this guy. I didn't want to talk to him about it. I only opened up that I'm a Scientologist to people that I trust and feel out where they might take to it. But he somehow found out that I was one and I just tried to brush him off. But no, he asked you know, questions. He wasn't too mean, but he was trying to get under my skin and he was definitely trying to, as they say in the cult, make me wrong for being a Scientologist. He knew I was in a cult. I knew I wasn't. And I didn't like talking to him about it. So one day, he um, this was in January 2008, just to give some reference. He dropped off a stack of books on my doorstep. The very top one was a book called Combating My Cult Mind Control by Steve Hassan. I think right below, below that was another book he did called Releasing the Bonds. These just happened to be the best cult books for beginners and all this shit. So because I was programmed as a Scientologist to anybody that tries to talk me out of Scientology, he was already pushing the limit. The fact that he dropped these books off, I was programmed to go down to the cult and do what they call a knowledge report. It's an Orwellian snitching culture. Yeah. So even if someone's not a Scientologist, you still report them, report them to the cult. So they have a file on this person. So I just happened to be too lazy. I was like, because I was going to do it that night. I'm like, I'll do it tomorrow morning. The books are just sitting there. I'm getting more and more angry. And by the way, Bryce, I called him up and left several messages. Fuck you, dude. I'm not Nicole. I'm going to fucking, you know, I don't know if I told him I was going to report. I kind of threat. I was really, really angry. So long story short, I said, fuck it. I'm just going to pick up this book. Like I said, the combating cult mind control. I'd say within about 20 minutes, my heart started to sink. And then by the time I got to the end of the book, I mean, I read it in one shot within X amount of hours. Um, I can't describe the emotions that were going on, but there's a lot of um, explanations, um, psychological explanations going into hypnosis, something called the bite model, how yeah. cults work, liftings, you know, eight points of mystical manipulation and mind control. I was just learning all this brand new stuff. But what really clicked was if he, the writer was an ex Mooney, that yeah. would be the moon cult, right? Sun Young Moon. 
if he had said Scientology is a cult, I would have just shut the book because it thought terminating cliches is what they're called. Anybody talks about the Scientology, you know, you're, not, you're just like literally programmed to shut down. It's like if you have any question about the government and they say conspiracy theory, it's like a word to just shut down the debate so you go no further, right? So because he didn't mention Scientology and he was describing the moon cult, it didn't take me long to figure out, holy shit, that's what L. Ron Hubbard's doing. Holy shit, Hubbard's doing that. Oh my God, Scientology does that too. And by the time I was at the end of the book, I was in a bad state, man. I mean, half happy that am I free from something I didn't even know I was a prisoner of? scared to death like how am i going to get my family out because i have to do that now they're going to turn on me how do i break them out of this spell that i'm understanding and just the overwhelming feeling of being lied to my whole life not being able to understand how erwin hubbard did the trick i had to learn a lot of stuff since then to understand what happened to me and it was a map to sum it up it was a massive complex post-traumatic stress disorder nightmares every night this is dissociated for about a decade and that's how long it took me to work through all the avenues of trying to extract myself not just from the cult but eventually my family who became you know the people that are supposed to protect you the most it's not their fault because they were programmed to became my you know enemies and they um pushed me to the brink of um you know wanting to suicide myself uh i went homeless the acting career i couldn't even focus on that i was about to go through a massive change um and it took about a decade to get through that part I, I totally, I, I hope um, you guys listen to that and listen to what he's saying. And we've talked about the bite model before on, on my channel, because it's very, you know, regardless of what your feelings are about the person who wrote the book, the bite model is one of the best, yes. most, I mean, I tell people to put it on the refrigerator because yeah. it's just a helpful to remind you, like, am I being manipulated? Am I being controlled? You know, and I, you know, you say that, it's, I mean, I grew up Presbyterian and I have a lot of issue with the church and i see you know people people will say like with the bible if you have questions they'll say oh that's just the devil the devil's yeah. worse than you it's the same thing to get you exactly. to stop critically thinking and um i know that you know on this channel doug we have gone through a lot of the missing books of the bible which has really helped and i i haven't been in church since i was 17 years old but it really helped me deconstruct what was left lingering um, just to read the real story of Yeshua, not Jesus, but Yeshua. And he didn't, he did he was not crucified. He basically taught you that it's you, boo. Like it, this is you against you. It's you just learning and growing as a soul. It's very liberating versus what the Bible is. And um, you know, and so it it just it's so wild to me. And we talk, you know, the fair gaming of Scientology. And I I will say that's one thing that drives me crazy when I hear people from cults say, Well, you know, the church doesn't do this. I'm like, Yeah, they do. It's called the Inquisition. It's called all the witch trials. It's it's called the the children that are passed around, you know, that are still it's called they have a hard time going to court too because of the religious exemption, you know. And I know, Doug, you have done and we'll get into how you started to figure out that this was bigger than just Scientology, but I wanted I'm gonna say this to you on air. I as everybody watching knows I work with a lot of other YouTubers who are aware of things as well and they work with whistleblowers who grow up in these particular um we'll say controller families we'll just say mm -hmm. and the five pillars of satanism now I learned this off camera I was chatting with someone off camera and she couldn't remember the fifth one but the five the four she could remember from a whistleblower was of of satanism scientology mormonism the Freemasons and Christianity. And she couldn't remember what the fifth one was from the whistleblower. But so they're all kind of, I kind of see it as like puppet masters using marionettes. And what's interesting too, and I talked about this with Claire Headley is that if you, you know, and what you've been able to do, Doug is impressive because you've been able to kind of sit back even with your own trauma and just see things from a bigger perspective, see the big picture of what's happening um, through the lenses of what you experienced. And, you know, when you look, uh, Claire had sent me a diet. I didn't want to buy Dianetics. I don't want to give them money, but she she sent yeah. me a PDF. And we know that darkness cannot create anything. Psychopaths can't create anything. They Narcissists can't create anything. Darkness can't create anything. In nature, the dark, it's the light that creates, right? Even in the womb of a woman, inside the womb, it's dark. But when a sperm hits an egg, there's a light right? The darkness can only help show you the light like that in, in that respect. And so what a lot of these like psychotic cult leaders, do we see this with Nexium? 
Uh, my friend Kelly Teal, who survived Nexium, they take truth. They take some truth. It's not theirs. L. Ron Hubbard didn't create anything. This right. is all stolen from other material. So they take something called the reactive mind, which which we talk about in Eastern philosophy. It's the subconscious mind, the, the vrittis of the attachment to the self, and they manipulate it. They exactly. invert it. And I've heard you say, and I think this is amazing, um, Scientology, as well as a lot of other cults, make people almost walking psychopaths. They kind of try to erase the emotional body. Yes. Whereas in the true teachings, in the from the Vedic texts, you actually dive deeper into that and you become more compassionate and you become a more understanding person because you know how powerful your emotions are. And so, Doug, when did you, at what moment in waking up from Scientology did you go, holy shit, this is bigger than Scientology? Like, what was it that made you start looking into everything else and connected to like governments and all that kind of stuff? And yeah, the, the conspiracy, the devil's in us now, you know, as we're challenging what the authorities tell us that's a really good question and i mean i don't know everything i'm always learning but the only yeah. reason i feel like i kind of got the ballpark right is because it was totally organic i mean i'm the last thing from a conspiracy theorist now mind you hubbard was a conspiracy nutter but a lot of that had to do with the fact he's running from governments <laughs> plus he knew a lot about the mk ultra project and he was looped into the cia projects and stuff too he wasn't dumb and like you said he sold everything from everyone and he did have insider knowledge so i just wanted to know how the trick was done i want to know what the hell happened to me and that book i told you about combating cult mind control was a really good primer because it went over things that i knew nothing about i mean hypnotism i thought was swinging a watch in, some, in front of someone's face um <clears throat> the bite model <clears throat> Behavior, information, thought, and emotional control. I never even knew these concepts. So I was getting my mind blown and just through a very natural, organic, intuitive process of trying to figure out what happened to me in Scientology, I automatically slowly started to become aware of like, you know, the television, the propaganda yeah. hitting me from politicians. They, it's, I could see the similarities. And then also, especially when the subject of narcissists came in, that connected a lot more dots. Like I said, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I just wanted to be an actor. I was seeking the truth massively. I was, you know, I thought I was seeking the truth with Scientology. So, you know, my life was also on the line. I, it wasn't an option just to go back to any, I didn't have a family or anything to go back into. And I lost my, my mind and everything. So I had to figure this out. And what I thought was it would take me about two years to put my mind back together again. You know, I was having a career in Hollywood. So I'm like, but I couldn't focus on the auditions. It's all I talked to with my agents, my friends. I'm like, I'm going to full-time figure this out. I'm going to keep going to acting class, but I'm going to pull back professionally a little while. And then when I get my mind and self back together again, and I know what happened. I'm going to really pursue where I left off in Hollywood. So naturally, my eyes started to open. And it was a process of not looking for it. I mean, literally, the, the next book, and I mean, I would have 10 tabs open on my computer while I'm, you know, living out of my car. This became a full time like obsession to feed myself with the basic knowledge that I missed as a normal human growing up in a cult because I was really dumb on one level. And then once I had a basic understanding of what normal people know, you people know, I then had to deal with other areas that a lot of people don't know about unless they might grow up in a cult and have to be learn esoteric knowledge psychology whatever you want to call it but i would never been introduced to this information in school or anywhere else so after i got de-dumbed and got myself up to normal human level by just reading as much as i could about normal subjects psychology explained a lot about what happened to me in the cult like i said i learned a lot about um, hypnotism nlp all sorts of interesting subjects plus i was interested in it um just a very organic process of one rabbit hole would lead to the next and then i ran into a whole bunch of um information that would talk about a global conspiracy and i i accepted that right away because i already was seeing it and i was very open to going well because i knew it's so hard to explain to people this is the question they have the most is how they're looking from the outside in going how can any of these people believe in scientology like it's so dumb and the leader's obviously a fraud his teeth are falling out like it doesn't make sense right but the way I describe Scientology 
in a sentence, because it's a lot of things, but in a sentence, it's being under a hypnotic spell. He was a master hypnotist. And you remember how we were talking about that communication course earlier that my dad got into? He went under in, in a few hours. They have drills where you stare at each other for hours on end. They can put you into a trance in day one. And unless you get, and they can maintain it for a lifetime. So we're not dumb. It's just that, you know, and Hubbard's not unique when it comes to the controllers. They do know how the subconscious yeah. mind oh, works. Absolutely. And if you don't, you're fucked, especially if you're a creative person, because if once you bite, bite into it, you know, and you open up that right brain, um, you're liable to just go into and the la la land very quickly, like I did. I mean, once I took to it, I really got fucked up. But but to answer your question, it was just an or I just said like Scientology, everything turned out to be the opposite. So my starting point was if I turn everything up on its head. Like if everything I'm told to believe, if I just look at it in the opposite way, like in Scientology, that was closer to the truth. In other words, L. Ron Hubbard says he's mankind's greatest friend. He turned out to be one of the most psychopathic people ever. He says he's taking you up to the, you know, freedom. You're actually being uh, more and more disassociated and more and more removed from your true self and having his ass implanted into your head. So everything was inverted. So I started to look at the world that way. And people that I used to look up to, be it my parents, um, Hubbard or authority, I started to question them. And as you know, as soon as you do that, you better be prepared to have your life and your perception and everything change because it's quite a shock to wake up to people that you just blindly trust in and believe in. And then you have a whole different, at least for me, it happened quickly. There was a whole perception shift, which therefore caused my entire life to change. It was super dramatic, uh, Bryce. I'm sure anybody that's quote, woken up. I know that's an overused phrase, but you know what I mean. You start to see through bullshit and you, and you, you kind of get freaked out. Anybody that's been through that process, they know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you do yeah. too. It's a lot of our viewers. And it's like, you know, they say taking the red pill from the Matrix mu uh, movie, but a lot of people say, no, it's actually taking a black pill because once you realize it, and that, that's kind of the hard road to walk when we you see so, how to live your life fully and have to like engage in the game. Yeah but yeah. also not play the game and yeah. um and it's it's you know i my friend tamara who is an astrologist down in australia she is very awake and she uh was um lionel richie she read for a lot of people in hollywood very interesting incredible lady i'll, I'll introduce you one day she, of course australia we I have a lot of australian viewers you guys have had oh. it really rough in australia no shit. And, and that's what's scary too, I think, Doug, you know, leading up to this generation where, where we are now, even for people, and I, my heart goes out to people who've been awake for a really long time. Me too. But at this point, there's nowhere to go. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Tamara always laughs and says, you know, we must have been sitting up in the ethers as souls and been real bored to decide to come to earth. For this I've time. thought, I've had many of I've had that similar thought before when I was asking, why me? What the hell am I doing here? What the hell is all this about? Come to me now. I don't want to play yeah. with these. This game Scotty, anymore. beam me up, man. This ain't my home. Get me the fuck out of the house. <laughs> Get me out of here. This is so, and it's and it's so hard. And so many people are waking up right now, but they get stuck. Um, you know, I, I see this a lot, and I hope people can really hear what I'm saying. The controllers of this world are many things, but stupid is not one of them. They're psycho. They're psychopaths. They're um, very um, maniacal and very controlled in the way that they plan things. And um, there are such things as junk conspiracies, and it's the Trojan horse. You know, they'll send in, and I've seen this happen in the the truther world i hate that name though i hate it we're seekers we don't know the full truth we're just seeking the truth but i've seen this happen in this world of people who have slightly woken up and they're they're looking for more and they get they get kind of taken by the trojan horse of the junk conspiracy cul-de-sac where they spin in circles distracted while the real thing's happening over here i see this uh, we kind of off camera talked about and uh, we can't say the name of it but the the number 17 the the cult where you know they're waiting for people who probably aren't alive to like the letter right after p right yeah right yeah that one and it's like they're focusing so much on these grandiose fantasies about people being alive who might be dead right when in the reality earth is flat, and even if it is who cares it's kind of 
you know, off topic. Um, right. Like when reality, we've got real problems on our hands that are, that are right in front of us, you know, and, and, and somebody said, I think it was actually my boyfriend who said this, like, you know, sometimes, cause we, we think about hypnotism, like CNN, Fox, these are all hypnotists, you know, they're hypnotizing you. That's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, it's all this all part of the same trick. Uh, the Project Mocking, uh, what's it called? Project Mockingbird or something? Where Project they Monarch, where they hide yeah. the media was basically, um, I would say not even hijacked, but created to um, hypnotize and propagandize people's minds. Yep, the and the same, the same people, the same families, six families who own the media are the same six families who own all the seminary schools. So it's coming through your yeah. religion, it's coming through your educational system. I've done a breakdown on the Federal Reserve. When the mm -hmm. Federal Reserve was created here in Georgia, off Jackal Island, um, that's when the public schools were created. Um, and that's when education was forced on people. Before that, children were learning Greek, Coptic, Egyptian, and they started dumbing us down. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, and we could just go on. And, and it's like there, there's, you know, and I think when you start to wake up to your whole world, and, and I know you had it in like a, like a, almost like a head on collision, like yeah. it happened to you in, in a very traumatic way. But, you know, when people start to wake up and they realize that their whole life has been a lie, everything, our food's fake, everything's not real, even though they want to be awake, it's like they subconsciously want to go back to sleep. And so they, they look, instead of watching the talking head on CNN, they start to follow these Trojan horses to tell them exactly. what to sleep instead of Another research. leader to look up to rather than look within and actually go the individuation route, which is fucking hard to do. And I, I'm, Bryce, the only reason I did that, as I told you earlier, my life was on the line it wasn't a choice you know right. i needed to understand it or i was going to perish <laughs> yeah I, yeah because I, I wouldn't it's not something i would have volunteered to do like it was a great gift now i'm fine i'm on the other side but i wouldn't wish, wish that upon my worst enemy and i feel like i do understand i would have stayed asleep i was asleep most of my life i just got lucky and got ejected out but the pressure of going your own way and not falling into um a controlled opposition or another side or another leader to look to outside of yourself. That's a hard fucking path, man. It is and, it's really hard. And that I will say too, for, for like the red flags for people, when you're joining any type of spiritual organization or self-help organization, or even if it's a karate dojo, yeah, the true teachings at, through the missing books of the Bible, through the Vedic texts, all these teachings, the law of one, it all comes down to you. You are your own savior. In fact, the uh, etymology of the word savior means one who saves himself. Nobody can do it. Nobody can ascend, if you want to use that word, can evolve, whatever, you, what, enlighten, whatever words you want. No one can do it but you. And I tell people all the time, like, that's your privilege that no one can do it but you. That just shows yeah. you that spark of, of life. I mean, um, in Genesis, the, the original, when I was doing my, you know, I think it's verse uh, 1, 3, where it says, um, and, and when God created the light, and the original word for light in Hebrew meant divine spark. So there's already, you know, we're looking at something outside of us. Oh, God created this, this sun. No, it's a divine spark. And that, that, that verse, it's saying God created you. He created you. So you are that divine spark. And you are the only one. You can use these tools. You can use yoga. You can use all these things to help you find yourself. But no teacher can give that to you. You have to find this yourself. And, um, you know, when we look at the negative path, the negative path versus the positive, the positive path is a social memory complex where everyone is equal and everyone contributes and everyone not like communism, not like, no, I get what you're saying. Uh, but the negative side is, is a pecking order. There's a pecking order. That's the, the, the dark side where we, and we see that, you know, that's like the Royal family always freaks me out. Like, how is this person oh, more valuable by birth than the person? Right, it's so ludicrous. That example you just used with the Royal family tells you everything to new. We need to know about kind of where we're at. Cause that should have been gone a long time ago in a grown yeah. up society. Right? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's like, you know, I understand respecting people who, who have really done a lot for your country and have really proven themselves and having that respect, not admiration, not like venerating, but respect, but someone who's just born in their, their position because that's that's it. That's the pecking order of the bloodline. Like that's yeah. that's all negative. And so we have to be careful we're not pulling that into and it's so much easier just to ask somebody for the answers. Yeah, like, it really is. It's never and people like L. Ron Hubbard, I mean, let's yeah, you're right. He had gross teeth, but you watch those videos. That man was charismatic. I think he you was think high so. I mean, time. oh, he was high. He was on drugs most of the lectures. He was a Crowleyite. That was his main yeah. man, and part of that, as you know, 
was to take massive amount of drugs to access the subconscious. I mean, you could tell he was tweaking. I mean, I just he was. It's um, it, the, no nobody. I watched um on Aaron Smith Levin's channel the guy um who who used to be the in jail. I forgot the loaf, uh, lifeboat Tommy Gray. I love he's but Tommy he, Scoville or whatever. Yeah. Yes, he did a show where he believed where he was trying to prove that or show his his observation that Hubbard was a massive drug abuser. And he was kind of talking about it. And, and uh, Janice Gillum Grady, who I think is adorable, she was a little girl with Hubbard. Yeah, she's like, no, he didn't do drugs. Well, m maybe not around you, hon, but the guy well, was I fucking Well, I kept thinking, mm, people who do drugs have a really good way of hiding them. I feel like Exactly. <laughs> Especially to Janice, who was young. She was his the Commodore's messenger is what yeah. they call it. So she's literally following around. But it's not like he's going to be snorting a line on the boat and shit right next to her when she's seven. You know what I right. mean? Right. Right. I kept saying, no, they can hide stuff like that pretty yes. easily. And if you are six or seven years old, you're not going to do it in front of a kid that age. Yes. And also, but if they saw anything, they might not know what it is. They don't even have <laughs> yes. a concept of yes. what that is anyway. And, um, you know, and it's, it's, it's interesting because I'm a huge supporter of plant medicine. Like I think, you know, I think microdosing is great. I think ayahuasca has a purpose, um, with, with, with help, you know, with a person that's monitoring you for your safety, um, but then you see the reverse of that where they abuse it so much that it almost creates this. And I guess that's what they're trying to do. It creates this enigmatic energy that attracts and sucks pe people in because it's yeah. almost it's almost subhuman in a sense, you know, yeah. that makes sense. No, yeah, totally. Um, and then, of course, David Miscavige is the new. And it's interesting. I've noticed this, Doug. And, of course, I was never in Scientology. Um but what I've noticed just in my observations is even though people acknowledge that Hubbard was a psychopath, there's almost like loving memory of Hub of Hubbard yeah. in contrast to Miscavige. And I, I'm kind of yeah. thinking, but aren't both of them the problem? They are, but David Miscavige could be compared to like a brute. He doesn't have the quote brilliance, whatever you want to call it, the cleverness, um, the charisma. He was he's different than Hubbard. Hubbard was aloof, super psychopathic but somehow he just had a it, he created it and david right. miscavige you know hubbard was a very vindictive man but he had intelligence tactics of going against people and even though david might uses the same tech because that's what he was trained in he would just beat the shit out of someone as opposed to using logic or the cleverness that hubbard had they're really two different people um this is why a lot of they're called indie Scientologists where they break away from the cult. They maybe grew up in the sixties and shit when Scientology was fun and stuff. And they don't see the whole con because what they remember is again, the aloofness of Hubbard, the charisma, whatever you want to call it. Those were the good days of Scientology. And then David Miscavige came in and he did make things more Orwellian. He's much more of a brute. He removed a lot of the technology, which you're never supposed to do. He's changed it. So you could see why people have been in forever and are super brainwashed that they would recognize David Miscavige as the problem, but sometimes for a lifetime, they can still carry their admiration for Hubbard and the tech. It's crazy. It's, and isn't it? I mean, that's, what's interesting to me is the psychology behind that as well. It is like, interesting. Yeah. Just how people, and I know like when somebody passes away, we've been trained never to speak ill of the dead. You know, we want to, and I think as an empathic people, we want to always give people the benefit of the doubt. We, yeah. You know, but it's almost like I listen to some of these and I'm like, that's so interesting. So when one sentence you're saying he was a psychopath, but next sentence the way you speak, it's almost like you're reflecting on your grandpa. Yeah. Now, it's interesting. But what you said, that's that's key. It sounds like Hubbard was able to outsmart people with his wit, whereas Miscavige just beats the shit out of him. You got it. So there was a you higher intelligence probably with Hubbard than with Whatever Miscavige. you want to call it, David was the brute. La yeah, lacking the intelligence, cleverness, manipulativeness. Um, I mean, they're both psychopath, I would say, but yeah, there was something very, very different about Hubbard and Miscavige is just, um, well, he applied one of Hubbard's policies to get to the top where power isn't, um, something you ask for it's assumed. So he was the most brutish was able to cleverly in his own way, rise up the ranks and knew what he wanted to do to take over Scientology. He had to push, um, people out of the way and he had a whole program, which he did think out on how to do that which is quite clever but he's a very abusive physically abusive man and um not that hubbard wasn't he was just um much more i mean i don't have any um any of those feelings for him bryce you know i 
stop liking Hubbard. I literally was like, thought he was the greatest man on earth one day and for most of my life. And then the next day, I didn't like him at all. In fact, I said I wanted to find out where he was buried. Um, he died in 86, dig up his body and beat the shit out of him because a man I never knew took my family, my mind, and it left me with this incredible conundrum where I didn't like him at all. But a lot of these people, like the, you know, Janice and stuff, and who could blame him? I mean, you know, Hubbard was like their father figure, probably. I mean, they, the entrenched memories they must have of this man. I never met Hubbard. It's so I can understand. Yeah. But still, what I don't understand is, you know, how you said it's fascinating. Yeah. I never, I don't like Hubbard, but it's interesting to study psychopaths. I do like to understand to get as close as I can to what they're thinking. And that's why I consider Scientology a little bit of a gift now that I'm out of it. Because it took me as close to evil as I can get, which is something you need to know about in this world without becoming that and then getting out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I, I totally get that. I totally. Well, it's interesting, too, because, you know, we talk about narcissism. I know we kind of spoke a little bit about this off camera, but I think, too, you know, as human beings, we're only living through the reality of our own perception. Mm -hmm. And so if you are somebody who is an, a naturally empathic person, meaning you don't have to think when it comes to feeling for other people and, and, and having guilt and understanding like love for a human and, and how to like have that. A narcissist or a psychopath does not see anybody that way, the same, the same way you process it, right? They, they play with you. They, they play on those things in order to use you in the way they want to use you. Yes. So it's easy to see how the projection of Hubbard for these people that were on the, the free winds, was that what it was called, the boat was called? Mm -hmm, you got uh, it. With him, especially. That, well, that's whatever. They were named different names, but free winds is one of them. They had the day. I don't want to get off on a tangent on the yeah. whole boat because that would take 20 minutes to explain it. They were on a boat. Just sailing with a around man. the world. Right. You know, Running away from the government uh, <laughs> in the 60s when they formed the Sea Org to get away from the governments that were sussing him and stuff. They basically form their own government. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. And, and when you're that young, especially, you know, there is a di dynamic relationship. You know, it's uh, the father daughter relationship is really important. And the mother son relationship is really important. There's a lot of psychology behind that. Mm -hmm. and so for these young girls who are placed in Hubbard's care, and I don't believe that Hubbard was doing, he wasn't a pedophile, was he? I don't think, you know, there's no evidence as far as I know, but you know, you have to think about that when you see, yeah. especially when there's a picture where they're all in there, you know, they look kind of like strippers or whatever, you know, they got the high boots on, whatever yeah. you call them. They're really young and nubile. And then Hubbard's is, oh, there's this picture of him and as an old man looking down. At him. I mean, I don't think he was a pedophile. I know he was bisexual. You know, he slept apparently with Errol Flynn and his, and his buddies just as much as he would sleep with his wife. Oh, interesting i wouldn't put it past him though you know bryce so much of stuff has been coming out with the danny masterson revelations yeah. this was a crowd that i ran with where i was not privy to any of this even though it was right in front of my face <laughs> there's so much coming out more about pedophilia specifically in scientology in fact i just interviewed a guy that was um auditing a guy who was the head of a pedophile ring so i didn't think any of that pedophile stuff was going on in the cult but more is coming out so if hubbard turns out to be a pedophile um, it won't be, it wouldn't be shocking. I'm surprised that there isn't evidence, but as far as we know, no, I have to say yeah. that. Yeah. As I said, some, it's all, uh, it's all weird. Yeah. It is very strange. And as, as a, um, you know, if it were a woman, I would not think it as strange because I think women naturally just already have kind of a motherly instinct. I mean, I'm 40, I don't have children, right, right. but I'm very protective over my nephew and nieces. Like I get that. And I, but for a man, you know, I don't know. There is something kind of weird about that, but there's never yeah. seems to be any type of evidence to to indicate that that was going on. And I don't think so. But for those little girls to be, and, and when you're a child, I mean, your brain from up to the age of eight is the most malleable at that point. Yeah. So to be that young, and I don't know. Like like I said, I have a nephew and two nieces. I don't know how these parents just handed their children over and put them on a boat in the middle of yeah. the ocean without I, I would not if my sister did that with my nephew and nieces i would probably go to court and fight for guardianship at that point because that's freaking what you know like it's it's just the whole situation and so the workings of the it's just it's so just complex and i i don't know if it was on your channel or another channel where someone was saying that cult leaders are always narcissists yeah that was hg tutor that said that and i, okay. I agree with them I, I i even asked him could a cult leader be a normal or an empathic person he said no it'd be impossible 
impossible. And you think about it this way, like I think about this a lot as uh, just driving. Like this is this is the shit I think about. Like, do I want to have control over it? I don't even want to. I mean, I I guess I own my own business with Esoter esoteric. Atlanta. You don't want to control people and everything around you, right? That, I don't want to do that. Like, I just do not. I have a hard enough time controlling my dog on a leash. Yes. Like, I just don't even. I I that me, that stresses me out. Like, I don't want it because I feel like if you even for people who own businesses to have employees to make sure their employees are okay to make sure that they're being paid enough to make sure they're be you know that's so so. And I don't want that power. Like that's just, I'm not interested. And so when I heard, I was like, that's because, and that's because narcissists don't have a sense of self. And so they have to feed off of, you know, a, an empathetic person will naturally have a self to rest into. They have to get their persona from, they have to feed off of someone who actually has a soul. Right. And so that's, I guess why they, and just the control, like just to tell someone like, you can't talk to your family because your no. family doesn't like me. I would never tell someone like that just doesn't even like enter my mind. And that's, yep. that's what's so sad. I mean, that disconnection is heavy in Scientology, isn't it? Yeah. That's one of the, well, first of all, that's a huge red flag without going any further, breaking down the bite model or anything. If when you leave an organization, this might be the difference between a religion and a destructive cult. They let you go. They don't have private investigators following you and they don't bring your family into an interrogation room and you saying, if you don't continue on and you decide to leave, we're going to take your fucking family away from you. That's a destructive cult. And they're one of the most ruthless when it comes to the consequences of both being in and especially when you get out. It's very hard to get out. A lot of people have um, died either mentally breaking down or physically being harassed to the point of exhaustion or suiciding themselves. And I would suggest that they even have... Um, several murders um made to look like suicides they have a they're very they're not like the mafia that's not exactly correct but they're kind of a terrorist organization they oh, terrorize absolutely. people per the policies it's funny you Hubbard. said that when you said mafia in my head i thought i actually would probably trust the mafia more <laughs> that's a great point so what because they have they have some some morals and and you know family yeah. loyalty right exactly yeah. so they're kind of like the opposite in a certain way i don't yeah. think the mafia just goes around I no think you're right i'm sorry to crimes. give a bad name to the mafia you're absolutely right about what i think the saying. gambino family i don't know i think they do their crimes because they're warranted not be just not because <laughs> somebody said they didn't like them that's <laughs> a good point man <laughs> it's not so let's use terrorist organization as a <laughs> i don't want to insult the mafia my bad that's pretty that's pretty well. sad though if you're if somebody <laughs> is sitting there like if you're a high-ranking scientology and you heard somebody go i think i trust the gambino my family more than you that's that's uh that's pretty uh that's pretty sad but you yeah, know yeah. but it's in it's that that you know i think about this a lot with like the c organization which you guys i mean you were never part of the c organization correct correct and I keep thinking about these poor humans, you know, just listening to everybody that I've listened to who's been a part of it. They really isolate those those people. Yeah, they, they, they make them work nonstop. They take away all their personal belongings. They don't pay them anything. So if you're 40, 50 years old and you want to leave, you have no money. You have no driver's license. You have no checking account where if your family's in Scientology, you have no no um, no place to go to for that support that's why i guess the aftermath that Ma aftermath foundation is awesome because like, i'll put the link yeah. to that down in the description box below so if we do have any people watching that uh need help i volunteered with claire from the atlanta org which i don't even think is that big but if oh, anybody nice, in atlanta friends. needs a ride i or anything i will come and get you i, I awesome I you never know I, I would I, absolutely i would come i know where it is i'll come pick you up and um you know that's uh yeah it's fine you know so um so you know it's it's just it's so a healthy organization is not going to put those boundaries on you. No, they're not, okay. you know, they're not going to tell you who, I mean, I, as a, as a teacher outside of this with the, with yoga, I, I know a lot of yoga people end up hanging out with each other because you have a commonality, but I always encourage people like, don't, don't not hang out with your non-yoga friends too. Like don't keep, <laughs> make sure you keep those. <laughs> that's important that you keep the, yeah. you know, and, and it's, it's, um, and I think too, when you find a spiritual practice or what you think is a spiritual practice that is giving you that false perception of hope, it's easier to fall into prey of a, of a predator. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's so I, I, the pe for the people who say, oh, that will never happen to me. Yeah. It can happen to you. Absolutely. Can I even, can I even take that one step further, Bryce? Yeah. 
because that's what I've heard the most, what you just said. I would never say this could never happen to me because of what I learned. I think that people say that it's already happened to them because someone, it's kind of arrogant to think you're going to grow up in this world, especially the way that it is today. Mind you, the controllers, whoever people think they are, um, they exist and they were here well before we came here. So we come in here with our dicks in our hands. We're all subject to programming of some degree or another, even if you grow up on a field in the middle of nowhere. So it always makes me cackle when people watch my story or other cult survivors or people coming out of an abusive relationship or people that think you have to be dumb to be brainwashed and hypnotized. I can't be hypnotized. I can't be brainwashed. We, I think we all are. And it's impossible not to because you mentioned earlier how we're hit from every angle. So the real wisdom, as Socrates says, right, is knowing that you know nothing. And then yeah. from there, you can get somewhere. So if, if you're, and by the way, the cults know this, the ones that are the most easiest to capture, like me, know that um, that couldn't happen to them. Those are the easiest people to get because yeah. they don't have the defense mechanisms up. I mean, yeah. that's that's a scientific fact, by the way, from people who've studied quote, cults. I mean, I can't tell you you know, the authors off the top of my head, but that's not me pulling it out of my ass. The ones that are most susceptible are the ones that know it can happen to them. And those that think that it can are less likely and more able to see the red flags. Yeah. And I think that's why your story and everybody's story and any cult survivor story is so important, not just for the bigger picture of the world, but so that you people learn how to, because when you were a little kid, you had a gut reaction to this and that was yes. the truth of it. And we see, and that's what I, I get so upset. You know, when, when you see children, children, um, have you ever seen the documentary Doug Carmageddon? No, I can no, send it that? to you after we get off of this. Um, I actually just did a discussion with it with my friend, uh, Kelly from who survived Nexium. And oh. I was talking with her on the phone and, and we started talking. It, it's based off of Bhagavan Das, who is, mm. um, he was a contemporary of Ram Dass. I love Ram Dass, but Bhagavan Das is a very talented kirtan singer. He's a very talented musician, but he is 100% a narcissist, and he is very manipulative with the people who follow him. Mm -hmm. And so Carmageddon is kind of about one of his students, I hate to say come to Jesus moment, but for lack of a better word, come to Jesus moment and realizing that this guy is not a guru. And um, I'll, it, it's great. Like, it's it's fantastic. Is it's, it on YouTube, Bryce? Is it on, yes. like, Prime? Is it on Amazon? Like it's on YouTube now. It was made in 2011. Every couple of years or so, I'll go back and rewatch it just to... I really want to see that today, actually, if you don't mind linking it. Because I, I love watching ask, stuff like this. I mean, I'll text it to you. I'll absolutely I would love to I'll, watch I'll email it to anything. Done. Yeah, because it's fantastic. And um, because that's the world that I'm in. I'm not in the Kirtan world. I don't actually like Kirtan. But I'm in the yoga world, and I've mm -hmm. spent a lot of time in India. And um, I'm very fortunate, as I told tell my friend Kelly, I, I've been in abusive relationships. Absolutely, I've been in that cult of one before. Mm -hmm. But I've been very fortunate with my teachers because I've never had a teacher that showed any type of control. It was very, very hands off. To, even in India, very hands off. Teacher, teachers, we have to find our own apartments. We have to find everything. We just, it's a school. You just go to school, and that's it. He doesn't give you like you go and you try to have a meeting with the the, the parm group one-on-one uh, -on -one to ask some questions about your life but he really doesn't give you any answers he just basically talks in metaphors because you got to go figure it out for yourself mm -hmm. and if you if you're there too long like if he feels like you've been in the school too long or in india for too long he goes you go home now like he'll send you home you know so i've been very fortunate that i've had really good teachers that have really given me the opportunity to have a fair shot at this text without being controlled. Mm -hmm. And But I will watch Carmageddon every couple of years since it came out in 2011 just to remind myself yeah. of how manipulative and how the, the main person, Jeff Brown, who did this documentary, he you can tell he's a brilliant guy and how Bhagavan Das plays on his intelligence and gets him like spinning wow. in his head overthinking things and trying to justify Bhagavan Das's behavior. You know? I, oh, I have seen this thing. That's sounding familiar. I really want to see this, Bryce. I'll send it, I'll done. send it to you. And it might be cool, like if you have seen it, watching it again after you have even more totally. um yeah. on what's, you know, and I I'm a huge I love Ram Das, who's another a contemporary, but Ram Das is very hands off as well. And in the documentary, he goes and actually talks to Ram Das, and he's trying to like justify things with Ram Das, and Ram Das is kind of like, you know, he's like, you know, he's this guy is like in his seventies, he's sleeping with the, all these young girls, blah blah blah. And does it really matter though if his teachings are good? And Ram Das goes, it all matters. It all matters. 
it, it absolutely matters, you know, and um, the, the teacher's job or the, you know, Scientology leader's job or the self-help person's job is not to push over the apple cart. It's not to create more karma for you. That's not the role of the teacher. The Unless the teacher is a psychopath, especially Unless if they're a conscious psychopath, that's exactly what their goal is without letting the adherents know, know that. Well, in Bhagavan Das, he uses that phrase, "My, I'm, I'm here to push over the apple cart. And he makes yeah. people think that that's in one scene, which um, I, after rewatching it again, after understanding how um, big, you know, before all this, I knew pedophilia was a problem. I didn't realize it was as big of a problem as it actually is. Is it a problem in that? Well, the guy, um, there's a scene where there's a girl who like just turned 18 and, and Bhagavan Das is probably in his 70s at this point. And he invites the girl to go on tour with him. Well, she's like 18 years old, right? She's young, dumb, and naive. She thinks she's literally going to go on tour with Bhagavan Das. She's not looking at him in a sexual way. Right. Well, then she finds out that the payment for her to go on tour with him is for her to sleep with him. And she turns him down. And then she goes and tells her parents. Her father sends Bhagavan Das a scathing email, rightly so. That's As her dad. Should. Bhagavan Das turns it on the father and says, oh, I've triggered you. This is your anger issues. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. The father ends up apologizing to Bhagavan Das. Wow. Wow. He is manipulative. Yes. And I'm watching this again and I'm thinking, if we, now, I know you met my boyfriend off camera. If we did have a child, I know if it was a daughter, he would never allow that to happen. Like, I know that he has, and that's part of spirituality. And that's the one thing that a lot of uh, gurus, fake gurus, will do is they'll manipulate spirituality. That if yeah. you want to be a loving person, you have to accept everyone and just forgive them. And right. Them. Let your boundaries down. There are no predators. Exactly. Everyone. That was a big part of Scientology, by the way, what you just said. But boundaries are really important, and, and, and I know spirituality. I'm still um, trying to learn to put them up, and <laughs> they were removed so much uh, growing up. I'm still learning how. I mean, I I, I still have to, um, you know, I still get manipulated. I'm I'm not perfect or whatever, but I I learn a little bit faster each time. But those boundaries, man, especially being kind of more of an empathic person, I realized since I got out of the cult. You project and you think everybody's coming at you the same way you are. So you just yes. don't fucking see anything until you're weeks deep into a relationship. And then you find out they had some hidden agenda or something. You're like, oh, fuck, I didn't see that again. So yes, it's yeah. like an ever going process. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's, and that's, and that's taken me a long time to really learn that in my personal life too. Cause I'll give, 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 give. And even yeah. my boyfriend's like, you've got to stop. You got to yeah. take care. You got to cut it off. And it's interesting, Patanjali, who wrote the Yoga Sutras and a lot of the Ayurvedic books 5,000 years ago, the number one rule of yoga is ahimsa, which means nonviolence. And people will often point out, he didn't say peace. He said nonviolence. So you have to stand your ground. Mm -hmm. Part of, if you look at like Gandhi, I know people have weird uh, ideas about yeah. Gandhi, but for lack of a better example, you know, when he was standing up against the British, he wasn't violently, he was just standing his ground. And, you know, if someone breaks into your home and is threatening your family, part of Ahimsa, even though this might seem violent, is to defend them, is to set that boundary up. Yeah, it's a boundary to it's defend a boundary. yourself and your life. Yes. And that is what I will say is another red flag for a healthy organization and a non-healthy organization. If the leader is not imposing boundaries or recognizing boundaries, then I would see that as a red flag at this point. Like, like my teacher puts up, like, we don't go to my teacher's house. We don't go. You, you don't know. show up at the volleyball court at 2 a.m. Uh, to exactly. meet uh, some short, fat guy named Keith Ranieri. That's another red flag. If anybody asks you to go to a volleyball court at 2 a.m., just pass. And they look like a troll. I mean, I, I, I laughed with my friend Kelly, and I, I might have said this off camera. Um, so I'll say it on camera, and I apologize if this offends anyone, but I was like, that man is so disgusting. He had to create a cult in order to get laid. Like I know, so but how did volleyball fit into that, too? I mean, he's not only uncharismatic. I mean, I don't want to speak, though, because I bet you in the cult, they probably did think he was charismatic and stuff. Just like a lot of people go, how could you follow Hubbard? But on a vol even volleyball, the weight, the headband, the whole thing about him, again, outsiders would go, I'd never fall for that. But he also was a was a master hypnotist, and he stole a ton from Scientology. He uses a lot of. Did you ever see that scene? I, there's a clip of it on YouTube, and I, it was either in Seduced or the other documentary, The Vow. 
But there's a scene where Allison Matt comes in to the volleyball court and just the way he walks over kind of breaks her down, gives her a kiss, and she's almost crying. She begs for an EM. And you could just watch her go under and be manipulated. Where he almost, where Keith almost does nothing but look in her eyes like a snake, and you could just watch her go under in about ten minutes. You know what scene I'm talking about? It's quite yeah. amazing. I, cause I remember because I because Allison Mack is just a little bit older than me, so I remember mm. watching Smallville as a teenager, and so she was the recognizable one to me. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking like, oh my god, she was a, on a show, you know, when I was a teenager, and she's the powerful one because she yeah. has, and the way that he was able to almost crush her, yeah. In that situation, did she marry a woman from Canada just to get her a green card? But she's straight. Like uh, that would offend me. Like if somebody asked me to marry, a a lot of things that he asked him to do. Because I would say that she's probably an empathic person with a trauma background. Just guessing, he he like a shark could sniff out that she's a prime target. And the more empathy and the more you care, I think the longer you can stay in the trap because you're going to think it's your fault. And you can see him play her. So, you know, she did some of the most evil things to the other adherents, but then the subject of brainwashing comes up where, you know, maybe she was a really good person that just got super manipulated because of her good qualities. And Keith sniffed that out and used her to do evil things under the guise of helping. It's just, she's such a case study because, um, you know, how could someone so uncharismatic and ugly where you have Allison Mack, she's famous, she has everything going for her. What would she need from him? You know, we know what he would need from her. And yet that you can see that the snake catch the predator. Yeah. You know, know, it's interesting as you're saying this, Doug, I've done a few episodes with Sean Stone, Oliver Stone's son. Yeah. And he, yeah, he's very aware and awake. Yeah. I would love to talk to him. I I can contact you together. if if I would be great if there's any way I would really like to talk to him. I can can message you guys together. Um, But he did a series and I'm going to paraphrase how he narrated it but he took it back to movie making and he said that the director is in charge of how you perceive what's happening the way the director moves the camera the way the director decides to focus on one person and so the director is manipulating the audience's reaction and the editor too yeah everybody yeah. and when you think about this from a cult perspective or a global perspective yeah. how that consciousness that collective consciousness is being pulled in one direction to perceive reality as the leader is wanting you to perceive exactly. reality which the leader knows is not the truth but for their gains and i am and i and i'm hoping you'll come back because i really want to i'd love to anytime you. bryce like the puppet mastery of like the son of Sam. Uh, may, I mean, I mean, I literally like after I, and I, I was telling Doug off, I don't know if I said on camera, off camera, but it takes a lot to shock my boyfriend because he's been awake for forever. And he had never heard of the process church before, before he started listening to your stuff. And he was like, holy shit, I've never even heard of this before. Like, this is wild. And, uh, and so the fact that you were able to kind of link things together and that's what, and that's what I say to, uh, when I think about education today, they're teaching and we see it in the general public too. They're teaching people regurgitation, not critical thinking. Not even slightly. No, yeah. they're, 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 they're teaching people how to repeat what they've been told versus sit back and connect the dots themselves through critical analysis, right? So I know there's a lot of people in the Scientology world that say, oh, they weren't Scientologists, they weren't connected. But what you've done, Doug, is you pulled it back and said, yes, they were. And and, and, and not only that, that, if you think about it, that would be the way things work, you know, what like attracts like, or, you know. Yeah. Uh, perhaps you know if you, people don't like the idea of a global conspiracy just think about a lot of people have money would want to pass that on and protect it amongst themselves you know i think a lot of this is done unconsciously too by the way i don't think people are planning it out but you know um like attracts like and it's you know there's so many offshoots not just the process church that's an offshoot of scientology keith ranieri as we talked about from the nexium cult sold stole so much of scientology it's almost like the ultimate blueprint est was formed by a former scientologist who stole hubbard shit and then that became landmark for him yep so there's and and also as you know bryce like narcissists or sociopaths whatever 
it's almost like they went to school and read the same playbook because it yeah. never varies. So they're yeah. not learning it. They're not going to school. They're not in on necessarily some conscious conspiracy. They just are what they are. And then they perceive a certain way. Right. So, um, I don't know where I'm going with this, but, but it doesn't, you, don't even have, you, you, you don't even have to, um, be a conspiracy theorist. I hate that word because it makes that it sound it. like you're a nutter. It's, you're just asking questions beyond the official narrative because it doesn't add up. Right. Yeah. But it's not that, um, it's just connecting dots and, if you had a, you know, that would obviously be for any cult leader, government official, or um, controller. That's the last thing you want to have happen because if you do teach people that, you can't fucking control them anymore. Exactly. So connecting dots is how our brains would work, anyways. Seeing that everything's connected to everything else. So if you have an offshoot like the process, um, you know, a, a lot of people take that too far, and it, ooh, it all means a secret shit. It's just like it tracks like the playbook is the same and it's pretty easy to see once you pull out of the actual cults themselves. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it's and it's it's wild you said that about like that is when I I was in a lot of narcissistically abusive relationships. That's why I ended up in trauma therapy. And it goes back to my I was in a narcissistic system myself. And and it goes back to actually, you know, you look at people like Allison Mack, yourself, probably me, a lot of people who get caught up either in a cult or a religion or whatever that's highly abusive and highly controlling and i hate to say this because i learned this from another cult leader which is tilled salon but she wasn't oh, right yeah. about this she was right about this one thing she said when we are little we are children um we are i'm, I'm paraphrasing how she said this we are attuned to our guardians our parents whoever is responsible because they keep us alive we know instinctively as an animal as a human as nature that we cannot survive by ourselves like puppies mm -hmm. follow their mom if our parents if our one of our guardians is dysregulated so let's say and it doesn't necessarily mean that your parents a narcissist or a borderline or any there might just be like alcoholism or arguing arguing between the parents if there's any form of dysregulation the empathic child versus a kind of just a normal child will pick up on that dysregulation and they will try to then fawn the dysregulation because they're trying to keep their home and their 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 space secure and safe because that person is responsible for providing them with the safety now this is all done on a subconscious level mm -hmm. so what happens as adults as uh, people who dealt with a dysregulated adult and was constantly fawning constantly like nervous and anxiety like trying to keep everything calm which a six-year-old seven-year-old can't do that within it but that's the natural instinct to try to keep them calm whether that's to get love whatever that is is as an adult we still do that so we are hyper attuned we walk into a room and whereas a normal person would 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 sense a dysregulated person and be like, ah, oh, fuck them. They're weird energy. I don't want, but the empath is going to go to that because they, they, that's what they know to do to instinctively try to fawn them, try to keep them calm. Cause yeah. that's how they were trained as a child. Even though as an adult, you can walk away. It's all subconscious. And when she, when, when till, when I saw that clip, I was like, damn it. She's right. She's absolutely right about that. That is for sure what happens. And I think that these dysregulated adults, these narcissists can spot that in an empath that they're willing to try to make you happy, to give of themselves, to yeah. even if they're not consciously aware of it, that that's what they're doing. They spot yeah. that. And I will say, HG Tudor did say something on your channel that I was like, holy shit, he's right. And I'm paraphrasing how he said this. So sorry, HG Tudor, if I say this wrong. He'll but come after you if you don't get it right. So be careful. <laughs> well, he, He'll he, find you. He said that I was like, ding, ding, ding. I ran out, like told my boyfriend. I was like, oh my God, this guy just like, I just had a light bulb moment. He said something along the lines of children that grow up with empathic parents, they're going to be fine as adults. So really, it doesn't matter if they're rich, poor, as long as the parents are empathic and are making that child feel safe and secure, then they're going to go on. But 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 kids who don't grow up with empathic parents are the ones that have problems. And I was like, that explains why so many people I know who grew up in super wealthy families now in their 40s are some of the most fucked up people I know. But then there are people I know who grew up borderline poverty and they're the most healthy people i know because it didn't matter really as a child what your parents had it was the safety they made you feel yeah and the so love kid, and the caring yeah this kid who grew up in a mansion even though he had everything he needed didn't feel ever feel safe as a child but the child who grew up with nothing felt very safe and therefore became a very healthy adult empathic healthy adult 
And I and, and that kind of I, I know I probably I didn't say it exactly how he says it, but I was like, oh my god, it just something just finally registered in me that it really just comes down to love and genuine love and being you know with, with kids. And when we don't have that as children, that that sets us up for um, danger, you know, in the future. But then we can take it. We can start to do listen to these interviews, go to therapy, and read these books and really start to figure out, you know, that's what I'm hoping my, my audience will do, especially for people right now who are in the process of waking up so that you don't fall, fall prey to another con. Right. That's challenging because, you know, I'm sure, you know, and your husband that, uh, or boyfriend or husband, Bryce. boyfriend, when is he soon to be soon to become, husband I don't or? know. <laughs> we'll probably just be, I think, I think we'll, I think we'll be common law. <laughs> Every yeah. little girl's dream. Hey, you guys love each other. Who cares? <laughs> um, I was, yeah. Marriage is just another contract where you got to get in some bite. Now the government gets in, be yeah. in between you and shit. And it's like, leave us alone, man. I mean, don't so get me up. wrong. I say to him, I'm like, I kind of want to dress. Like, I don't like, you want to do the ritual. I want to yeah. do the ritual. But yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Involved. Yeah, but no, I think we'll probably, it's, it, I know, listen, he's not going, he's basically my husband. Basically, we share everything. So um, that's awesome. Yeah, but, but yeah, it's, you do fall prey. Like a lot of times people go from one cult to another cult, don't they? Yeah, because, um, you know, you said your husband woke up after 9-11, 2001, so he's been seeing this for a while. I'm sure he'd tell you, and you know too, and anybody listening, the rabbit hole goes deep, man. Just when you think you got it, you got to keep going and going and going because, you know, both sides of the debate are controlled. Like, if you're a yes! controller on yes! the level that they're playing at, they um, would obviously be smart enough. And like you said, the psychopathic mind somehow seems to have a plan, like a computer program. Yep. They can do long-term planning, um, whereas empathic or normal people, you just want to live your life, be left yeah. alone. You're not thinking about, like L. Ron Hubbard woke up every day saying, how can I control the world and my flock a little bit more each day, right? This is what Bill Gates and these people, I don't fuck, I don't know if I get hit by YouTube, but this is I'll, what the I'll go people, back if you need to say it, I'll go back and bleep words. So don't I'll worry just keep that. that out. Like psychopathic people, right? A lot of them are on the world stage. They um I don't know, man. They fucking I I completely forgot where we were going with this, Bryce. Like um, uh, knowing how oh, to like, just about, how catch people. Just about how they would be privy enough to know that the way to lead the opposition is to control it, right? So yeah. if you don't think like they do, in other words, this is why I like having hg on this is why i got a gift out of getting so close to evil like we said earlier hubbard and getting as close to inside of his mind and his way of thinking and people like him as i can without becoming them because then you can start to wrap your mind around the impossible i mean most people go they can't be doing that because because you know you would never do that but they right. do and they are and they will so once you can get inside the head like that you can understand that both sides, the opposition is, is most likely going to be controlled. Yeah. This is why it's like for the election, do you want psychopath A or B? Yeah. Nothing fundamental changes. And in my opinion, it's all a ruse. But if you don't get streetwise and go down enough rabbit holes, you could get stuck at, um, you can, you know, Christian patri patriots might see through the conspiracy, but then Jesus saves, or maybe yeah. you're in the Q thing and um, yeah. Trump saves. In other words, it's uh, like you said earlier, I think the end of the rabbit hole is when you finally realize that you have to save yourself. There are no saviors. And if you meet, you know, if you go with your intuition and you meet halfway, unseen forces will come to your aid, but it doesn't mean you have to join a cult. No. There's help out there, but you have to do it yourself. Yeah. And that, I think that's what makes us all vulnerable, especially the people that say, I'd never join a cult. But then you'll see them place their faith in a false political leader or someone that's going to save them so they don't have to take the longer harder path of self-introspection and basically responsibility i think what it comes down to is responsibility because you can't be controlled and yeah. these controllers can't do anything if we were in our own power it's a relationship just like what you know the narcissist hg would tell you if you're in your own power so to speak you can't be controlled so it's a agreement where I will agree to stay blind to my subconscious blind spots so I can take the path of least resistance and sort of pretend to myself that somebody else is going to do the work for me that I need to do. Someone else is going to save me. And I'm I'm only speaking from experience. I don't feel better than anybody. I went through this experience. You know, I was as codependent as you could be on my mom and my cult leader. And when I woke up in my 30s, I felt like a child starting over. But that's when I realized um 
we're all dependent on something. You know, we want to be loved. It's hard to take personal responsibility and not blame the governments or your mom or your cult leader or your friend, but to, you know, pull those projections into you and try to make sense of um of why the hell I gave my power away. You know, mind you, I was manipulated as a kid. There's that. But there was a certain amount of agreement where I had to subconsciously or maybe even consciously bullshit myself to allow me to keep going along with this because the other alternative is I'd have to make a drastic life change and I'd actually actually have to grow up, you know? I'd have to get out of childhood and actually become responsible. And to me, much of the human race actually doesn't grow up because no. of the stuff that we're talking about. So we look outside of ourselves for someone else to save us. And so you can't really blame anybody at the end of the day because it doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to do that. You know, people ask me all like, I, like, what are we, you know, if, cause I, I talk about this a lot. I love you said this, the, the controlled opposition. I mean, they always, yeah. fund, they always both fund both sides of the war. You don't exactly. think ninety nine percent of the people on YouTube claiming to be truthers are actually controlled opposition? If you haven't figured that out by now, they're leading you and distracting you, telling you it's okay. The white hats are in control. Don't worry, just sit back and yeah. relax. And I'm like, the Trojan horse is coming in with the New World Order, guys. Like, you know, and they're like, well, how do how do we? You know, my thing. I keep telling people everything I've learned. If we want to get rid of this level of malevolent, nefarious shit. Mm -hmm. we have to heal ourselves exactly. because like attracts like as you said and they know this the more hopeless we feel the more we sink down into those lower the more we're going to look to them yes and the more we release that the more we can't we can't play in the same game anymore because we're too we're not attract we're not like does not attract like in this time and like the the law of one says like their density which is the density we're in you know every density gives the soul a chance to refine itself and this is the density of polarity of, of good and bad god whatever you want to call it you know and that creates the friction mm -hmm. and the friction is what's needed for you to understand who you are it's like i tell my students it's like a match a match has everything it needs on it to light but it cannot light itself unless it's scratched up against the book yeah That's good book. analogy and so you got to use these ex and it's hard to do and i don't have all the answers like i'm still you know, I feel like the day we figure it all out is when we like peace out, you know? It's like, yeah, and if anybody says they have all the answers, I run from them because that's yeah. usually a cult guru uh, leader. Exactly, so, exactly. I have it all figured out, said Hubbard. You just have to watch, walk the exact path and you don't have to think too much and it's all laid out, son. Man, that's a that's a real Huge high too. That's hard to give up though because it there is an attraction to having somebody else to believe in and do it for you. I mean, yeah. it's oh, definitely. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I will say if anybody, one thing I've learned too, that I've noticed, if you go into a, a school or yoga school or dojo or the self-help center and the leader has a name for himself, yeah. like Vanguard or what was Hubbard's, the commander, what they like a, 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 a Commodore, the Commodore, a nickname, that's a huge red flag. Um, Good point. In the Indian culture, if someone calls themselves a guru, they're not a guru. All right. They, that they don't, the, the teacher doesn't put that name on themselves. The students put that name on the teacher and they don't call themselves that the minute someone starts calling themselves that run, yeah. run away, run far away because they're not, you know, you are, you are your own guru. You guru means uh, darkness to light. You are the one that turns your darkness into light. You lean into the shadow side of yourself. You lean into that darkness yourself to heal it. And when I figure out how to totally do that, <laughs> I'll already be in there. Then you can form your own cult and teach you other can form people. Your own cult. <laughs> <laughs> so and you can say, I actually do have all the answers. Here I it actually is. No. figured it out, guys. No. And that's that's um and I hope the people, you know, one thing I get to with a lot of people, we talk about one last thing. I know we've been going over an hour now. You know, I see all these people, what? oh, but the Bible, revelations is happening, prophecy is happening. I'm like, yeah, because the yeah. people creating the issues also wrote the Bible. The one who yeah. wrote script knows how to play the script read yeah. the missing books of the bible you're gonna have a lot of clarity there oh but the devil wrote the who told you who told you that what constantine at the council of nicaea in the fourth century he boiled his wife alive for shits and giggles this guy was a psychopath i wouldn't listen to what he's saying like this is the research people have to do is to like really understand where they've been fooled but at the end of the day you know Planet Earth, according to the law of one, so take it, you know, with a grain of salt or for what, what, what you will, planet Earth is one of the hardest third density planets because we take our evil to an extreme that other third density planets don't take it to. 
But because we have so much evil, we also that also means we have that much goodness on the earth as well. Yeah. So anyway, any party words for today, Doug? I'm s i am I can not wait for you to come back. I really can't wait to get into this. Thanks for having me on, Bryce. Anytime. I feel like we just scratched the surface. Yeah. Oh, for sure. No, that was really cool what you had to say. You know, I, when I was going through like the flashbacks for many, many years when I was coming out of the cult, I would have dreams like that where, you know, because when you wake up, just using Scientology as an example, I mean, I thought this was the greatest good and the scale of evil, I'm still unpacking it, you know, like 18 years later. It's really, really deep. So I've had recurring nightmares. Um, and my dreams, you know, I could use to, that was kind of my subconscious speaking sometimes too. So it was like healing while I was having these really intense dreams. <clears throat> and I would often think about like that, like almost as if I was looking from the outside, not from the Palladians or anything. I'm just yeah. talking about a metaphor where You're I felt yourself. so dissociated where yeah. I was outside looking in at this world. I'm like, would there, if I didn't experience it, I would never believe it if somebody told me that such a place like this actually was real and could be this way and existed just to give you an idea of how kind of outside in i was looking at it it's just funny what you said because i don't know how it could get any more challenging unless we were in hell itself <laughs> but surely surely there's Might life there's Maybe life the and joke. all sorts of other stuff out there this has to be one of the shittiest places yeah i mean i've, I've said that to my friends too bryce that you know we're still voting and shit or whatever and it's like or following q and it's like you're so pessimistic and all that i'm like no i'm actually happy for the first time i'm like out of the you know yeah. i can actually think for myself so i'm not pessimistic i'm just like you know that's reality like if you bury your head in the sand and don't look at evil especially with the times we're living in now we're missing the opportunity for the for like the great gift so it's not pessimistic to wake up to the scale of the evil in this world it's the way out yeah absolutely absolutely and yeah i i i feel sorry for the people who are really caught up into into that group because it's just handing your power over again to yeah. something that they think is going to happen and it's like you know i know the whole thing about kennedy and it's like if john f kennedy jr is a lot if, if he let's say if he did fake his death and, he's and jim morrison yeah yeah i mean how does that affect your life how does it yeah. affect you personally it doesn't you're just wanting him to come in on a white horse or i say come in on yeah, a spaceship exactly. and save you no it doesn't the only people that would affect would be his immediate family right not not you so so but it gives like, you something to believe in rather than have to do again the hard work of saying holy shit, there's no saviors i have to actually do this myself that's where you go into terror zone exactly but that's also the way out i think man yeah, absolutely. if my experience is anything to go by because like i said bryce i was never a conspiracy theorist i didn't wake myself up i got lucky i mean every day there isn't a moment that goes by that i don't no matter what happens in my life i never have to go do a scientology course i got this man's brain at, you know shit out of my head like it's great not to be a scientologist such was the devastation of the experience so uh yeah, it, yeah. it's it's it, it, once you can reflect back on it and be in that place yeah, of like being grateful something it, even though it was hard that's when you know you've done a lot of healing when you really like worked on yourself and and one of my fa actually it might be a john lennon lennon quote but it's one of my favorite quotes it's a it's a um a religious person is a person who has never seen hell a spiritual person is a person who's been to hell and back again and yeah. that's necessary to actually go into that in order to know yourself and why you know i'm sitting here thinking why believe in something outside of yourself when the the, the gift is that take that and believe in yourself you know in the power of, of of your divine spark in your soul and and i say this to people all the time the controllers have done so much to try to control us hypnotize us use us doesn't that tell you if you sit back and look at that doesn't that tell you how powerful you actually are that's one of the things that l ron harbour would often say too and this is oh, why really? he used a lot of, well he used a lot of as you know a lot of truth and there was a lot of gnosticism in there there was a lot of ideas that i agree with anyways i always felt like there was something more than the five senses i wasn't just my yeah. body my brain and personality i felt that as a kid when i was out of scientology when i was in it and then when i escaped 
So a lot of these cults use, I would say, truth to bring it in. Well, you have to, because if it's just all bullshit, how is it going to work? And they can't create anything. So he was basically, because narcissists have to kind of tell you who they are. And so he's basically telling you, you're a powerful He was constantly telling us that. And I'm going to take from you because you're powerful. Like, you know. Well, he didn't quite do that, though. It's a clever manipulation where um, that was the truth. You know, like he would always say that because he was a conspiratorialist, too. But a lot of that was him running from his own shit that he was doing. And the conspiracy in Scientology is not accurate. It has to do with an alien named Zeno. It's just not on point. But the point is, is like um, he would tell us that. You know, Scientology offers a spiritual power and look at how powerful you must be because look at everything society has done to try to take away your power. He would point out certain controllers and stuff, the 12 families and all that. So he hits on things where it might resonate with you, but then he's doing the same thing to you. Yeah. So a lot he's of these like, new over here. bring you into what I might be actual truths, but then that's the hook to invert everything. That's one of the best traps because Scientology, you know why the... Uh, Janice Hillham, Grady's and all that. I got to still hold on to it and can't maybe let it go or maybe never. Bryce, it is so powerful to feel like you are totally thinking for yourself. Hubbard's not telling us anything. He even says all the right words. He says, think for yourself. Don't believe anything I write or, or you know, you hear or that I wrote unless you yourself check it out for yourself. He's saying all the right things, but at the same time, there's exact policy you have to follow. There, there's a contradiction. There's incredible rules and regulations to not do that but you can't fucking see it so yeah. if you tell a scientologist they're brainwashed they're not thinking for themselves they'll point out to the policies where it says here's who the controllers are hubbard says right here in the paragraph always think for yourself don't don't just listen to me so he says the right things but the mind control the hypnotism and a million other elements to trap your mind unless you know about that stuff it's a very very clever seductive it's, there, there, are, there are many things but stupid is not one of them and i as yeah. you're saying that i'm like that's q today that's what q does you know he yeah, said exactly you know, don't don't believe you know that's true you should never take any i tell my 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 viewers all the time don't take my word for it do your own research yeah. but in that, saying that hubbard isn't censoring and telling you can't look at things that contradict yeah. what he says. So, you know, it's 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 the subtlety there, the subtle. Control. It's subtle. Like yeah. you, you know, would give you 90% truth. They'll open up you to the conspiracy and they'll lead you in the cul-de-sac. And that brings us back to, you got to think like the controllers think. They're going to have um, both sides controlled. And they're going to know, especially by pulling the, um, I don't even know, P-A-N-D-E-M-I-C. Especially yeah. since pulling that off. Um, don't you think that they're going to know that X amount of people are going to wake up and are waking up? So obviously they're going to have the opposition controlled. This is what they do. It's like a playbook that we're talking about. So no, if something feels close, you still got to do it all yourself and not get locked into a group because a lot of people that were questioning the official narrative, rightfully so. And then it was created to not only lead them down a cul-de-sac, but to make the people that can see through all of it look like nutters because they compare those people to the idiots. And right. It's, you know, you just yeah, got to oh. start thinking like Hubbard and these freaks. Gotta, At least that's yeah, what yeah, helped me get out of this. It's a war. And, it's and, the art and, of war, like Sun yes. Tzu's. Yeah. And they're go- they knew. And if you look at this astrologically, we are coming to a time. If you if people believe in astrology, where we're yeah. coming to a new timeline of understanding. The controllers know that, too. Yeah, they're and they are into this it. stuff, the astrology, yes. the occult, and they try to, you know, plan events according they to dates it. and I symbols mean, and all this shit. That's why in World War II, uh, Hitler and uh, Hitler partnered with the Pope at the time and created what they called the Hess Act, which which started the propaganda that all these occult tools were of the devil, so the common man wouldn't know how it's, to read them anymore, so that exactly. they had that control, so that exactly. they can say, "Oh, this is forecasted to come, so we know it's coming." So now we have to divert attention so that we don't lose control, so that we they can- use these tools and then they debunk oh, them as um, not true and conspiracy nutters, which keeps the public going. Well, anybody that figures it out, they say, "Well, that's also in movies and shit everywhere." So, oh, you watch the movie, this or that. Um, but the controllers, the the real ones, not the puppets, you know that we see, yeah. they're absolutely occultists and into oh, all absolutely. this. Absolutely, you know, absolutely reading the signs are. and know when you know mind yeah. control masters. You know, yep. they study all this. They, they study the psychology of us. Spirit. Yeah. They know how the soul works. They know how to play it. They are super smart, and that's why I want to shake people because it. it and I I tell people, I, and you know, we're like, oh no, well, what 
you're watching is a movie. Get your popcorn. I'm like, yeah, so you're yeah. investing your laurels while the New World Order just walks Yeah, and who would tell door? you that? The fucking... The controllers. The con creating the controlled opposition. Yeah. I would agree not. with them about quite a bit of the conspiracy information, yeah. which is the bait and the cheese, just like we were talking about, that Hubbard uses and any good manipulator uses to bring you in with some, you know, maybe even 90% truth. But it's a 10% bullshit. And um, they, yeah... It's so sad too because so sad. a lot of these people legitimately are seeing through the bullshit media, but they haven't sussed, as they say in the Matrix, how deep the rabbit hole actually goes. In other words, and, start thinking like the controllers, and I think you can start to suss them. Yeah, can, and they've they've replaced all they've done is replace like CNN or Fox with Telegram and YouTube. Yeah, yeah, and that's not you know. And I tell people my channel time: if you got to turn me off and go to research, turn me off and go to research. Like you need to empower yourself. But yeah, it it um. You know, and, and I and I try to um, I, I quote Aristotle a lot when I say it's a sign of an intelligent mind when you can entertain an idea without accepting it. But that's mm -hmm. the thing is like, can you sit back and, and observe something as just interesting for a while? I mean, when, when yeah. it first started dropping, I remember my, my boyfriend was like, this is interesting. And he was like, let's just see how this plays out. Yeah, exactly. And I, I liked how he said that. Let's just see how this plays out. Let's not get attached to it. Let's not. Let's just watch it for a moment. Let's observe it and just see what happens. And, um, you know, I, I, I just, I, I, in that group, they're, they're practicing the same politics that the woke, the super left yeah. do as well. They yes. practice censorship. They practice cancel yeah. culture. I was observing a group on Telegram doing this. And, um, you know, there's that whole theory that Melania is also really uh, Diana too. And that the real Melania is a Romanoff from Anastasia and all this, this hoopla. And somebody had gone in and said, okay, well, let me look into this. A Russian girl had gone in and done some deep research, went to the archives. And she came back on this Telegram channel. And she's like, I don't believe this is accurate because this is what I found. And she got blocked from that group. Yeah, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. And so it's, and I, I want to shake people and be like, don't you see that you were behaving the same way that the people you claim to to hate or dislike are behaving? You're painting people black and white. All of Hollywood's black. No, it's not. There are some really good people in Hollywood that are stuck in this crappy cult yeah. or that are just trying to make art. They just want to, you can't, you can't tar everyone with the same feather we need well, that's why the court of law has uh proof not hearsay right mm -hmm. you have to you know it, it's it's just it's and i just really hope people can kind of just take your independence it is hard you know i will say when i was in church as a kid they had this poster that i've always remembered and i, and I think it's true one thing i learned from church that i think is true <laughs> um, <laughs> um what is popular is not always right and what is right is not always popular I'll do you one better. The multitude is always wrong. Well, isn't it? Who said, like, if you are agreeing with the masses, it's time to reflect on your beliefs? Was that like Bill Hicks or was it, it some philosopher? Mark Twain or, it was somebody who yeah. said, if you were, he also says it's easier to fool someone than convince them they've been fooled, which it's is true. You know, these trite little phrases that I grew up hearing while I was in the cult, live my life meant nothing. But when I got out, I was like, fuck, I understand exactly like, what oh. these mean finally. <laughs> Holy shit, they're true. These so basic even, simple yeah first. even if you're in the q cult and you think you're the uh, counterculture and blah blah yeah, blah in the know in the know look around if you're agreeing with everybody in this organization reflect on your own beliefs for a minute right yeah. like you know so anyway doug i know we're getting close to two hours now so i'll I thank you so much Bryce. So bryce it's a great conversation I man know, i got caught I'm up so in it i'm so happy we're going to be uh, collaborating more and i'm one yes. six guys i'm going to put the links to doug's channel in the description box below i also really quickly because we doug and i both uh deal with censorship and all sorts of we're really running uphill and water trying to put this stuff out and I, you said this on one of your shows and i was like yes duck because i have said this on my, one of my shows as well i don't want to solely be on rumble or these alter i love i'm grateful for these alternative platforms but the main war is happening on youtube and so we need these voices even if we're shadow banned so guys please make sure to share doc's channel to share this video to get his work out there with your friends and family if you want to support doug off of since we don't you know it's hard for us you do have this um uh, it's almost like a patreon but it's not what is it kofi what's this company called doug it's kofi where um i don't have to monetize the channel i, I don't have it monetized i'm not demonetized but 
I just don't want to hypnotize people with ads. Practice what you preach, right? And, right. A, and a bunch of other reasons. But yeah, it's just a place where people can throw throw some money if they want to, but I don't really give a shit. Well, I joined it because I, I know how Thank you, it by takes the way. to do this um to do this work and I know how, how many hours it takes and I know your dedication. You so you guys, if you are want to, to join and help support Doug, I'm also gonna put this link down in the description box as well. Um so you can help support his work and help uh the healing really take off and, and support him in that way so and guys any questions you have for doug please put this down in the description box below i am going to put this up on youtube i'm going to go through and edit i'm going to add pictures and i'm going to bleep some words that i've said you've said just to keep it just but it'll also be up on rumble i put everything up on rumble too so please go and ask any questions if there's something in this interview that struck you and you have a question ask it i can ask we can talk about it next time and i really i'm so excited to get into your your conversation about the summer of psyops and <laughs> Son sure, of whatever you want to talk about man that stuff is fascinating so anyway guys well thank you again doug thank you thank you thank you and i you guys we will both both be seeing you all very soon have a wonderful day everybody bye